new scientific discovery or research finding can be a real um, interest to the media in terms of covering a celebrity, personal story, a specific month, and a specific event, such as this event. But um, there are certain things that we need to use the opportunity to really utilize a uh, ability to uh, get the message out. This is a picture of Jay Monahan. Um, you've heard his story, and um, I can't, um, I mean, you've heard it from Katie. Um, and when Katie went on the air and said, you know, get a colonoscopy, I did, and showed the public what it was like, there was really something striking in the actual um, effect. And this is from the uh, publication in the Archives of Internal Medicine in which the cork effect was described. Um, week zero identifies the time when Katie got her colonoscopy. And so rarely do you see data where there's just a break in the curve. I mean, usually you see some type of arc, some type of exponential change. But here, when Katie got her colonoscopy, it literally was a break of a 20% increase of colon cancer screening via colonoscopy. And as far as we can tell, that's been sustained. We have to relook at the data. Um, but it was a significant enough change to get us to really think, what else can we do for outreach? And so um, Katie and uh, Lily Tartikoff went to the Entertainment Industry Foundation, the EIF, and established the National Colorectal Cancer Research Alliance. Um, and that was founded in the year 2000. In 2004, the Jay Monahan Center was established here in New York with New York Presbyterian Hospital and Wild Cornell Medical Center. And this is us opening the center with big scissors. Um, this is the CEO, Herb Partis, of New York Hospital. And um, this is a little bit of the Monahan Center. You can see we have a lot of TV screens. We do a lot of um, outreach even inside the center. There have been some very exciting select outreach programs, again, representing collaborative efforts. This is the NCCRA um, with the EIF and many other different organizations, GI organizations and advocacy organizations, looking at the U.S. statewide and saying, let's give a letter grade based on the ability to screen. In other words, if screening is covered, you get an A. Katie mentioned that her sister, who had died from pancreatic cancer, was um, a senator in Virginia, was instrumental in getting one of the first states to actually pass legislation that enforces screening for colorectal cancer, that it be covered. And um, so you can see Virginia is a A state, but unfortunately we have a lot of red states here that have the letter grade F. So we have to do better in this country, state by state, to get screening for colorectal cancer actually covered. And believe me, when you're a legislator and you see your state as an F state, you're really not too happy when you compare it to other states. Sort of like the message we heard how we like to uh, lead by example. We have some other key partners. Um, Olympus, one of our sponsors of this conference, has been incredibly helpful in getting us to help use celebrities um, as role models and examples. Um, this is Heidi Klum, and it says, um, help is, uh, Let's see, it's more fashionable to talk about colorectal cancer. In other words, um, that even someone uh, like a model, uh, like uh, Heidi Klum, could talk about colorectal cancer. And then um, here is Dennis Quaid talking about colon cancer having no symptoms. And again, collaborative effort with Olympus, the EIF, um, the National Colorectal Cancer Research Alliance. And then we have CDC Screen for Life, which you heard Laura Sieve talk about. Um, this has really been a fantastic campaign that's been going for um, about 10 years now, and it really is trying to focus on getting people screened through using this type of outreach. And it's not just print, it can be print and media. And in 2004, they partnered with Katie and the NCCRA to try and work on some of these um, media campaigns, both in print and broadcast PSAs. This is one of them, Are You the Picture of Health? This is the one you might see in a lot of airports. Um, and uh, that, I think this is what Katie was talking about that sometimes frightens her when she sees it. Uh, this is um, data from 2007, and actually uh, Laura Seif is part of this, where they really looked at what is the effect of using celebrity endorsements to expand the reach of these campaigns. And what they found as of June 2007, and I guess, Laura, you can give us the most recent data if you have it, but I mean, it's staggering numbers. 4.5 billion audience impressions, that means Anytime someone has either heard or seen this, that's counted as an audience impression. 
and more than 70 million donated in space that is given to them for free, which otherwise would have cost $70 million to utilize. So they're able to go to certain outlets and ask for space to be utilized for um, outreach. Here's one uh, of Terrence Howard that's just most recent, um, talking about his motherhood, colorectal cancer. Again, um, working towards different demographics and role models. Um, we work with um, the uh, CDC and many other organizations like the Department of Health and um, Taxi and Limo Commission, the EIF, the NCCRA, and the Jay Monahan Center to get some of these PSAs, which were already um, uh, produced, into taxi cabs. So again, this concept of using something that the CDC has been doing and bringing it in with other organizations for, in a cooperative effort now to put it in taxi cabs. So when gets in a cab, there's a little TV screen. They might see one of these PSAs that they otherwise may not have seen. We, um, when I say we, now we're talking about the Jay Monahan Center launched a ad campaign on top of New York City taxis with um, taxi and. Um, uh, Department of Health, the Taxi Cab Board of Trade, uh, Clear Channel, and Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers is the people who make Bugs Bunny and all the rest. And this is the character that we have, which um, most Americans recognize this character. He's a chicken named Foghorn Leghorn, and he speaks with a southern accent. And he says, I say, I say, don't be a chicken. Talk to your doctor about cancer screening. What's great about this campaign is not only is it that it's on a taxi, but it uses the city number 311. This is the same number you would use if you saw a pothole that you had to report. So the same number that you call the city about a pothole, you can get information on colorectal cancer screening. And I think that just shows the magnitude of what we've been able to accomplish in New York City by working together so closely with the Department of Health. It was really a fun, and this is a fun campaign. We had the actual Foghorn Leghorn come to our courtyard at the Monaghan Center with Katie Kirk. Um, this you may recognize as the super colon. Um, this is uh, Bo's group that created that, and we actually crawled through the super colon, even scoped the super colon. We're reaching out to women. The ACOG is American College of GYN. And again, collaborative effort. GI professional organizations, um, the CDC, ACOG, and um, patient advocacy groups. How are we reaching out to women? Well, we realized 10 years ago, this is 99, that women were very good in red and blue for mammography and pap smear. But 10 years ago, we were very poor in screening for colorectal cancer. And we thought that if we could get colorectal screening in the same realm as breast and cervical, that we might actually be able to see some of the numbers like we saw with breast and cervical 10 years ago. And that's what we're beginning to see, finally. By utilizing this type of outreach, we're hoping to mimic what we had 10 years ago with the female screening. Um, are you the picture of health? This went to gynecologists so they could put in their office. So women come in their office for one thing. It says, so get your, get your mammography, get your pap test, and if you're 50 or older, get screened for colorectal cancer. Again, reaching out specifically to women. This is an information bulletin that went to the gynecologist. And we have, have a task force that has an incredibly large group of, um, of, of institutions and, and um, coalitions dedicated to really uh, eradicate colorectal cancer. Here's the steering committee for this group, um, the transatlantic group with, between um, Munich and uh, New York City. And we're hoping that this first transatlantic symposium is really going to be something that we could take forward. And I throw one last thing out, and that is, should we try and have a symbol like we have here in the States that we could make as a global symbol of what we represent? This is the blue star. This was actually set up nationally so that um, we have a way that we could each use the blue star with whatever format we would like. And um, the slogan, preventable, treatable, beatable, maybe we should do something like that, use this symbol or something like this that we all can agree on will be the universal symbol. So thank you very much.